and he is a mechanical engineering professor at UC Berkeley. Um, he also, he's also the James Marshall Wall's academic chair, and also co-director of Berkeley Center and Activator Center. So we are very, very honored to have him here with us here today on Zoom to share his academic journey through a conversational interview. Hello? Uh, hello, uh, you're still muted? Yeah, thanks for the introduction. Thank you, thank you. Um, so, let's just begin with um, you introduce us briefly about your background and specifically what factors or opportunities prompted you to study abroad at an early age. Okay, uh, first of all, I would say sorry that I won't be able to uh, do the in-person meeting with some of you guys because I'm actually now in Taiwan uh, on expedited leave. So I'm uh, doing the Zoom through Taiwan. And uh, you may guess uh, I was born in Taiwan and educated all the time through my college in Taiwan. And uh, during my age, I have to do a two-year two military service and then I went to UC Berkeley for my graduate studies, including Master of Science and PhD. And I don't, I think most of you are probably not like me. You are probably born in the US, educated in the same system. And so I have an interesting journey in terms of uh, uh, at least finishing my undergrad degree in Taiwan. And then I worked in a company for a year. And I actually came back to Taiwan uh, to be a professor in the National Taiwan University for two years. And then I went to University of Michigan and Auburn for three years. And before I came back to UC Berkeley uh, in 1999, all the way until now. So that's a very short journey I, I would describe. Yeah, I think based on your description, I, we can really say that you're truly an international scholar. Then through all of these past years of your journey, were there any really memorable experiences, rewarding moments, or challenges that you want to share with us? Uh, I would say for most of uh, you guys, uh, as a college student, what kind of the big decision you will have to make? Uh, I often talk to my own student, uh, undergrad student, would be which direction you may want to go. Uh, some of you may choose to go to industry, and some of you may uh, choose to go to graduate school. So that will be probably the biggest decision you have to make uh, in coming days. So when I was at your age, uh, that was an interesting decision for me because my, I would say, undergrad uh, study was pretty good. So by default, I'm those who kind of uh, didn't uh, label that I should go to graduate school, and that's what I did in an interesting way. And thinking back, I think that probably would suit me the best because my, I would say, uh, style is more like uh, freedom. And that also happened when I finished my PhD degree. I did work in a company. Uh, I liked more of the uh, research freedom. So I work in a company, I have to work on the same device uh, for uh, day and night. And I, I kind of like the academic like that I can work uh, maybe into one project, I can work on 10 projects, 20 projects. So that's actually maybe hopeful, hopefully give you some inspiration for your own journey. Thank you, thank you. That's pretty good advice. And transition, in relation to that, we know that you're a mechanical engineering professor and uh, you've talked about how we should all kind of find our own interest and passion. Then let's talk a little more about mechanical engineering specifically, because it seems like you have devoted to this field since your undergraduate degree, like you mentioned. Um, what, how would you describe this field to someone who might not be as familiar as you are? And what aspect of this field that you think captivated you and kind of transformed this to your lifelong passion? So mechanical engineering, you can consider that in different uh, aspects. So for one example, uh, I think most of you drive cars, so automobile industry, most of the engineers there would be mechanical engineers. 
Another example, when you fly on the airplane, a lot of the hardware uh, airplanes are designed by a mechanical engineer. And mechanical engineering is one of the fundamental engineering disciplines uh, in the College of Engineering. And that will probably give you a general idea. So it's, it's more on the hardware side, in a way, okay? But certainly there are also software focus research topic and test. Um, so for those of you who are interested in mechanical engineering or who do not know what kind of a major, uh, but I guess you already have a major, uh, the interesting question you may face is that when you select whatever major you are in right now, a lot of you maybe just by kind of a destiny, because when you apply, you may not have a strong desire which discipline you like, and you may just end up getting to whatever discipline you are in. Uh, my recommendation is that you just need to see if you're interested in the particular subject you are in, and develop your own interest. Because for most of the, uh, the people, it could be including myself, it's not like I was born to be a mechanical engineer. Uh, I would say very few would be something like that. So, so you just need to test yourself and get yourself familiar with the subject and see if you can develop strong interest in the particular major. Mm, yeah. Then a little question that's kind of more related to that. What would what would you think that is the biggest risk you've taken risk risk you've taken throughout your career in the field of mechanical engineering? Because I think that. It's a very innovative field in a way that you have to keep research and have this passion when you don't, when you are conducting all of this research. And were there any specific moments or lessons you've learned by taking this, this big risk that you'd like to share with us? So uh, I think throughout your career, you, there are many decisions you have to make, and some of them are major, some of them are minor. And my recommendation is that you just Pretty much based on your intuition, you just have to take action and then correct whatever things you feel you are probably not on the right track. Uh, for myself, probably the biggest uh, research career decision I made was when I was at Berkeley the first year as a master engineering student, sorry, master science student, uh, I was, my major was actually in control. Uh, then what I found is that a lot of control has many mathematic theories to be developed. Mm -hmm. uh, I could do it, but I don't feel that's my interest. So after a year, I made the decision to change to a uh, different field for design. Mm -hmm. And not only I changed that to design, I changed that to uh, an area called microelectromechanical system. So it's very connected to electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. So that would be probably one of the biggest my career. Um, research change. Mm, well, that's perfect because our last question is what kind of drove you into this niche field of microelectromechanical system? Because a br mechanical engineering is obviously very broad and you definitely had a lot of choices. Then, what factors uh, made you make that decision, that pivotal decision in your career? So, I changed to the field called MEMS because this is a, or this was a very interesting emerging field uh, almost 30 years ago. And that is a combination of mechanical engineering because it has mechanical structure, you have to design mechanical structure. However, we are using the IC manufacturing process, so something like your Intel chip, that kind of a micro machining process to make micro mechanical component. So that will become a very exciting new field and I feel very interested in, to, for example, doing CAD drawing, doing analysis, uh, fabricating the very, very small device and also do different tests. Mm -hmm. So that was actually the very fundamental reason I kind of go into this particular field. Mm, I see. I, I agree that it's definitely very um, a field that has a lot of applications in the future, and um, it's really nice that you like to share your uh, reasoning behind choosing this field. And transition transition to the next question. Um, what? So you've been you've studied and worked with a lot of different scholars from all over the world and from very different backgrounds. 
what are some of the interesting or significant insights you've obtained from these experiences, and specifically on the innovative and collaborative aspects of research that you think is very valuable and you'd like to share with us? Maybe I will answer this question in a way uh, that you may be more interested. So I've been a professor in Taiwan, in National Taiwan University, mm -hmm. also in University of Michigan and Auburn, and then UC Berkeley. Uh, and often I was asked, what is uh, maybe the fundamental difference between students in Taiwan, uh, in uh, Michigan, and in Berkeley? Uh, when I was in Taiwan, uh, I only teach graduate level course. Uh, I would say Taiwanese student is more, uh, how should I say, uh, you have to give them more instruction, uh, so it's more, a little bit more passive. You have to give them more concrete direction for them to do things. And when I was at University of Michigan, uh, I taught both undergrad and grad, uh, but I want to compare undergrad. Mm -hmm. And because I was teaching the same course at Michigan and at Berkeley, mm -hmm. I would say something like in Michigan and Berkeley, if you take the overall average, it's probably about the same. Uh, however, the range of student variation in Michigan is more narrow. And Berkeley is a little bit wider range, which means you have a, some students that are super smart and some that are really at the bottom in a way. Uh, give you an example. I was teaching the same course in Michigan and Berkeley and using the same, uh, I, would, I would say, formula. Mm -hmm. So when I'm in Michigan, I taught three years. I used the same formula. Nobody actually said anything. And at Berkeley, the first time I used the formula, one student in the audience immediately say, oh, Professor, there is a mistake in your particular formula. Mm -hmm. so, so that's actually the super smart student at very side. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's really interesting. And me personally, I have studied in very two different countries. So I do echo with the experiences that you've described. And I agree that just before I was definitely a more passive learner than now. And now I would actually point out or have the courage to be more actively engaged in situations like this. And uh, the next question um, brings the focus more specifically at Berkeley, because you have been a pretty very core member of this community. Then um, in relation to what you've just kind of talk, talked about before, what are some of the things that you've learned specifically as a member of this community that kind of have um, this courage and this very fighty sense of innovation and activism, everything that you think is really unique and special um, that you'd like to share? So I've been to many different places, as I described. And sometimes people say, oh, why do you uh, go back to UC Berkeley? Mm -hmm. I, I think there are fundamentally two reasons. Uh, one is the weather. <laughs> I think the bear and weather, there's some comparison compared to in Michigan. It's yeah. so cold uh, during the winter, and Taiwan is so hard in the summer. Yeah. Uh, the second very interesting reason you guys probably know is that Berkeley is one of the most liberal places. You have lots of freedom, not only in, I would say, academic freedom, but also community freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, you're probably a little bit young, maybe about 10 years ago before the new uh, stadium, the football stadium, was reconstructed. Mm -hmm. uh, before we can do it, there were old trees. Uh, now it's been cut off. So there were tree protectors. They climbed up to the tree. Mm -hmm. And because somebody was there, the, the school delayed the construction process for, I think, two to three years until well, the Berkeley went to the core. And, and the core ordered those tree, maybe, uh, protectors to come down. Oh, wow. so it's a very liberal place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree. A liberal is probably one of the biggest um, things that Berkeley represents, and it's dichotomous and it can be good and bad. So um, mm -hmm. the last thing is, do you have anything else that you would like to share with the audience today? Um, anything ranging from your academic experience, from being a professor, and also just um, as your life journey proceeds that you would think um, it's important to share? Uh, maybe today I saw lots of uh, young students here. So the one thing I want to encourage you is you should try to explore different things and don't be afraid of making mistakes. You guys are so young and you just need to try different things and good things will come out. Yes. 
Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Very inspirational. Time for Q&A from the audience. So, anyone has a question they'd like to ask? Don't be afraid. It's a very unique opportunity here. Anyone? Uh, anyone who might be interested in mechanical engineering? <laughs> uh, anyone is? Okay, we do have a question there. Hi, Professor. Maybe I have a question on uh, why did you decide to choose mechanical engineering as your field? Uh, as a person, I'm uh, learning math and I'm thinking about taking uh, more engineering courses and I still have not decided on what type of engineering I want to do. So uh, I might want to listen to your advice and thank you. Okay. I think. Uh you probably want to try a different subject. Uh, I don't know the, the requirement or the limitation you can, for example, transfer from math to say, mechanical engineering. For example, you may have to do it in your junior year or your sophomore, sophomore year, otherwise it will be too late. My personal experience, uh, you guys probably do not know or you do know a little bit. Uh, during my era, we take a uh, college entrance exam, and then before we take the exam, we fill out the university, also the department, by rank. And that depends on your score and depends on your own, uh, I guess, desire. They assign you to a particular university with a particular department. Uh, that was the old system. I think a similar thing happening in China, such that uh, it's Partially my choice, but partially destiny. So that that's how I end up with mechanical engineering as my undergrad degree. And after I studied that, I feel uh, relatively good match. I would not say everything is perfect match, but uh, everything is give and take, right? So so I feel that's an interesting uh, area, and I feel comfortable seeing mechanical engineering. And for you guys. You probably want to explore different courses and see if you develop some interest or some, sometimes you can take undergraduate research experience and you may figure out your true interest. Okay, thank you so much for, um, again, for spending your afternoon with us. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Lin, for participating in our event.